All right, so first of all, I would like to thank the organization for giving us the, the opportunity to present uh, this work on the final limits for one-way information reconciliation. So this is joint work with uh, Marco Toma Michel that uh, while we carried out this project was at the uh, National University of Singapore, now it's in the uh, University of Sydney. It's also joint work with Jesus Martinez Mateo from <coughs> Universidad Politécnica de Madrid. Uh, with uh, Christoph Pacher from uh, AIT and myself from Universidad Complutense de Madrid. So the, the talk is divided in five parts. In the first part, I will introduce once again a quantum key distribution. Then I will present the problem of uh, one-way information reconciliation. And this will allow me to motivate the problem. Why are we interested in finding out uh, the fundamental limits for one-way uh, information reconciliation? And in the fourth part, I will present first the theoretical results and then some simulation results. That is, if we have some um, real error correcting codes, how close can we get to these uh, theoretical limits? Finally, in the fifth part, I, I will uh, uh, discuss a little bit uh, our findings and also point out to some possible future directions of, of research. Okay, so. Quantum key distribution is a, um, a cryptographic primitive for key agreement. So we have two honest parties, Alice and Bob, a dishonest party, if the, the eavesdropper. And what they want to achieve is Alice and Bob want to create an information theoretically uh, secure key. What do we mean by information theoretically sec secure? We mean that the success probability of any uh, attack is going to be upper bounded by some constant. And this is going to be regardless of the uh, resources that the uh, eavesdropper has. So a QKD protocol goes in the following steps. First, we have as prerequisites uh, that Alice and Bob should have access to a classical channel, that is a channel in which Eve will be able to listen, and a quantum channel. And uh, we will assume that all the noise that Alice and Bob are going to find in this quantum channel will be uh, the effect of the action of uh, the eavesdropping of, of Eve. So the protocol itself is going to con uh, consist in these phases. First, a quantum phase. Alice is going to prepare n quantum systems. She's going to transmit them through a quantum channel. Bob is going to uh, measure the systems. And after this, uh, Alice and Bob uh, will have two correlated strings, x and y. So then the parameter estimation uh, phase comes. Alice and Bob are going to uh, estimate uh, the correlation between their strings x and y by making public a subset of their strings x and y. Then in the shifting steps, Alice and Bob remove the uncorrelated systems to produce some uh, raw keys of length n that we will call later the, the frame size. And then the information reconciliation step, that's the, going to be the focus of, of this talk. Uh, in this step, by exchanging messages on the classical channel, Bob should estimate Alice's raw key. Finally, in the privacy amplification step, they will distill some secret uh, key of uh, size n, uh, smaller than little n. OK, so. In one way information reconciliation, Alice and Bob are going to hold some rockies Xn and Yn that are going to be distributed according to some product uh, distribution Pxy. And what Alice is going to do, she's going to compute a compressed version of her raw key Xn and she's going to send it to Bob. And of course this is going uh, to leak some information to the eavesdropper. Then, Bob using M together with his own Rocky YN um, is going to uh, construct an estimate X hat of X. This problem of one way information reconciliation is exactly the same problem that is known uh, by the coding community as the problem of source coding with side information or source compression with side information. And the uh, asymptotic limits uh, for this problem are well known, and it is known that it suffices. Uh, for uh, n large enough for Alice to send uh, n times the conditional entropy of x even y bits to Bob so that Bob can reliably recover x. Okay, 
So the secret key length L of a QKD protocol is going to be, to be reduced by leak uh, IR, the amount of information leaked to the eavesdropper during the information reconciliation step. So this uh, leak IR is uh, usually hard to determine. So what we do in practice is to bound the uh, leakage by the length of the messages used for information reconciliation. And motivated by the asymptotic limit that I said before, the amount of information that is required to perform uh, one-way information reconciliation is normally written as uh, chi times the asymptotic limit, where this chi is always going to be greater than one, and it's called the reconciliation efficiency. Maybe it should be called inefficiency, but I will uh, keep uh, coherent with uh, previous literature. So in the QKD literature, we find often that it is assumed that this chi takes the value of 1.05 to 1.20 for all scenarios, all parameters. However, it is evident that this choice should depend on the distribution PXY, on the frame length N, and on the uh, target frame error rate Epsilon. So the question that we posed ourselves is, what are the fundamental limits of information reconciliation as a function of these parameters PXY, N, and Epsilon? And the second question is, what are the, fundament, uh, what are the practical limits if we have uh, real error correcting costs? How close are we going to be to these uh, fundamental limits? Okay, so as I said before, the first order asymptotics of source coding with side information are, are well known. And uh, there ha has been some recent work on, on the problem, particularly Hayashi in 2008 and Tan and Kosut in 2010. And uh, previous to our work, the bonds on the asymptotic expansion up to second order were known. So what have we done? In this work, for an arbitrary probability distribution, we provide the asymptotic expansion up to third order for the converse bound. We also have an achievability bound, but I won't uh, talk about this. If you're interested, please check our preprint on the, on the archive. And we also provide for a special case that is going to be related to the probability distributions that we find out in uh, QKD, a non-asymptotic converse bound. Finally, we will compare these bounds uh, to implementations of one-way information reconciliation using low-density parity check codes. So we say that an information reconciliation protocol is epsilon correct on PXY if the probability that the protocol outputs a wrong string is upper bounded by epsilon. And for epsilon between zero and one, for large enough n, any epsilon correct information reconciliation protocol on PXY is going to satisfy this bound. Where where h uh, of x even y is just the, the conditional entropy, v of x even y is the conditional entropy variance, and phi is the cumulative standard normal distribution. On red, you can find the uh, third order a term that corresponds to our contribution. Now, this previous bound is an asymptotic bound. That means that for large enough n, it's going to hold. Now, for a probability distribution that we are very interested in, we are going to find a non-asymptotic bound. And this probability distribution, PXYQ, is the probability distribution that results from measurements on a channel with independent QRQ. This is the distribution that we are going to find after running BB84, after running the six-state protocol. So we say that an information reconciliation protocol is epsilon Q correct if it is epsilon correct on PXYQ. And for any epsilon Q correct protocol, we are going to find that its length is going to be always greater than this one here, where F uh, minus one is just the inverse of the cumulative uh, distribution function uh, of the binomial distribution. Now for this uh, uh, distribution that I presented before, we are going to specialize the uh, asymptotic converse bound. So for epsilon in zero and one and Q between zero and one half, for large N, uh, any epsilon Q correct information protocol is going to satisfy this bound here, where the term that multiplies the asymptotic limit we denote by chi, and it's going to depend on N, on the frame error rate epsilon and the QRQ. 
this term has this, uh, this form where h of x is just the binary entropy function and d of x uh, has, has this form. So this is an asymptotic uh, bound. However, what we found out numerically is that this simpler bound that is easier uh, to compute matches very well the uh, non-asymptotic bound. In consequence, for all the numerical results that I will present from now on, this is the bound that we are going to use. So I said before that the efficiency of an information reconciliation protocol is the value uh, that multiplies the, the asymptotic limit. So then simply plotting this chi uh, depending on n, epsilon, and q, we are going to obtain a forbidden region for efficiencies of information reconciliation protocols. Here we have chi plotted as a function of the block size n. And it's uh, interesting to see, well, um, the three curves have fixed the frame error rate uh, to 10 to the minus 2, and they correspond to three different qubits, 1%, 2.5%, and 5%. Uh, and what's interesting to see is that for a, a low block size, uh, specifically for a block size of 10 to the 3, the value of efficiency 1.2 is within the forbidden region for the three curves. So no protocol uh, will exist uh, with an efficiency of 1.2 with these parameters. Here what we plot is chi as a function of the frame error rate epsilon. And here what's interesting to see is the trade-off between um, the efficiency and the frame error rate. So if we accept a very high frame error rate, then we can get a very high uh, efficiency. However, if we require a very low frame error rate, then necessarily the efficiency will be uh, bad, or we will need to uh, consider larger uh, uh, block uh, lengths. OK, what I said so far regards only um, the fundamental limits, but what happens with uh, realistic uh, codes? So here, through the fundamental limit, I plot a curve. This is also a, a theoretical result of the frame error rate as a function of Q. Now I'm going to compare this curve with, with what we obtain with LDPC codes. And the first uh, surprise would be that uh, the results that we obtain with LDPC codes do not uh, overlap uh, the theoretical results. In fact, they are quite separated. And a second observation is that the shape of the curves that we obtain with LDPC codes are reasonably similar to those of the um, asymptotic limits. So what we conjecture is that for LDPC codes, we can recover the efficiency curves of LDPC codes introducing these uh, two deficiency parameters, chi1 and chi2. So what we are going to do is to fit the LDPC curves to these two parameters. And what we see now is that uh, these uh, fitted curves can reproduce the efficiency of LDPC codes very well, at least until a frame error rate of around 10 to the minus 3 or 10 to the minus 4. So why is this? This is because uh, LDPC codes have two different uh, working regions. One is called uh, the waterfall region, and in this uh, region, the frame error rate is going to uh, drop very fast as uh, we decrease the, the cuber. And the other is called the error flow region. And in this region, the, um, uh, the frame error rate is not going to drop uh, so fast. So if we think that the theoretical bound uh, drops very fast for, for all Q, it's uh, uh, easy to see that it's a little bit hopeless to try to fit the complete LDPC curve with this uh, two-parameter approach. However, up to frame error rates of 10 to the minus 4, uh, the fits work uh, very well. Here we have the exact, exact values uh, of the fits, and we see that for all the uh, codes that we considered, these fit parameters are quite consistent and, and similar. Now, uh, I uh, also compare um, the fundamental limits with uh, LDPC codes. On solid lines, what we have are the fundamental limits, and the dots represent 
uh, the numerical simulations of LDPC codes. Again, we see that they are completely different to the uh, fundamental limits. However, if we fit with these two parameters, chi1 and chi2, we can recover uh, the, um, the efficiency that we would obtain with LDPC codes. So somehow this conjecture is at least uh, uh, verified by uh, the numerical evidence. So what have we done? Uh, we have found the fundamental limits for information rec uh, reconciliation in the finite key, key regime. And we, fa we have found that the commonly used approximation of 1.1 times the asymptotic limit is often too optimistic for one-way information reconciliation, at least in uh, many scenarios. We also provided simulations for LDPC codes and uh, an approximation with these two deficiency parameters that could be used for the design of QKD systems, since we know that there are going to be codes that verify uh, the ranges of uh, efficiency that we have provided. Some open questions would be, uh, is the conjecture verified by other code families such as, let's say, polar codes? And maybe of a more fundamental uh, nature would be to consider the joint optimization of the fundamental limits of uh, information reconciliation together with uh, privacy amplification. Okay, so thank you very much. Um, in your paper, uh, you uh, state a upper bound on log of the size of m, which is almost matching the lower bound. Is that uh, bound uh, explicit? Meaning that uh, is there any uh, explicitly constructed? Uh, it's uh, uh, asymptotic. It's asymptotic. It's asymptotic. Explicit. It's so the, there is a explicit given uh, code uh, in the asymptotic uh, way. But yes. I think, okay. Thanks. Yes, I have a question uh, regarding one of the assumptions, which is that Bob has to guess Alice's key. Um, well, what, what happens if we assume that we can tolerate a very high uh, frame error rate? Then is that bound still valid? Can we uh, somehow maybe beat the Shannon limit if we assume, if we accept a very high er frame error rate as long as we can check which frame are, are bad? Uh, I'm asking the question because I, I've been working recently with some LDPC cards that seem to beat that asymptotic Shannon limit. Um, maybe we, we should uh, discuss later about that. Uh, but uh, I don't think that in general you can beat the uh, Shannon limit in any uh, useful way. Oh, well, I can show you some examples. Okay, sure, sure. The, the bounds you show are, are general for any codes, not specifically tailored to LDPC, or am I right? Yeah, they, they are general for one-way information reconciliation. If you consider yes. two ways, then the situation is completely different. But yes. for one-way reconciliation, they, they are. Okay. Uh, is it possible to, to maybe uh, refine those bounds if you take into consideration the structure of LDPC codes and the, or maybe in a probabilistic way for how you de generate them? Maybe, but the problem of uh, characterizing how LDPC codes are going to uh, behave for finite lengths is quite open, so I don't think that uh, much could be done, at least for the moment. Mm 